Hi everyone, welcome to the lab. Look what I've got on my bench this time. This is a Rotel surround sound receiver. Not a very fresh model, but still quite a decent piece of hi-fi equipment. And it has some problem powering on or staying powered on or something like that. I'm not sure exactly. Let's take a look. A look at this back panel. So many connectors here. So let's see what we've got. There is a hard power switch here and the soft button on the front panel. Mains input without uh, ground pin for some reason. So this thing is uh, fully isolated and floating. 5 channel amplifier and all sorts of inputs and outputs. No HDMI, S-video only, which makes it a bit obsolete. And uh, all sorts of uh, digital inputs and outputs, uh, optical and coaxial. A little cover is missing in this optical input. Component video, composite video, and uh, some remote control stuff, and even computer I.O. I'm not sure what that is. Now, let's see what happens if I turn this thing on on the back. All right, this uh, light is on. Let's try. So it powers up. All right, after a few minutes, it started clicking and powering off and on. And that must be the problem. Let's take a look inside of this thing. Apparently there is a linear mode power supply here with this massive transformer, these filter caps for high voltage power rails, this must be a bridge rectifier, some linear regulators here for lower voltage power rails, a couple of relays, uh, this must be a radio receiver, this little board is uh, for some inputs here, uh, four uh, large boards here with some more inputs and outputs and I would think with some digital uh, converters and decoders and such. This board is uh, for power amplifier outputs. That board under it is uh, with mains input and some filtering before this transformer. And this board is a five channel power amplifier with a lot of power transistors mounted on this uh, massive heatsink. And there is one more board on the front panel, and not visible, it is behind this metal plate. So, I would think we need to focus on this power supply board. I suspect electrolytic capacitors, but you never know, the problem might be with something else. And it is not accessible from the bottom, so I think we need to remove this board and check the capacitors first. Here is a closer look at this power supply board. And look at this uh, dark glue or compound, whatever it is. I believe it is supposed to give these capacitors better mechanical support. And it is cracking all over the place, like here, for example, and also around this capacitor. And I think I see some corrosion here as well. And also, I believe here is a diode covered with this stuff. And the diode does not look healthy to me. Here is a closer look. And I don't like this at all. I believe we should flip this board and test the diode. And here it is. There is a symbol on the board. And look at this. Nothing. There is another diode here. And here it is. No problem. But this one is not there. The diode seems to be cracked in half, and there is some corrosion on the board. I cleaned this area with alcohol, and it turns out this trace is broken. 
here is this capacitor. I don't know this brand, TK, Japan, 470 microfarads, 35 volts and 85 degrees C rated. And it does not seem to be bad at all. Let me show you. There you go, 365 microfarads and that is at 1 kilohertz. Dissipation factor is 0.38 and ESR is uh, 0.14. And for comparison, here I have a new Nichicon capacitors, exactly the same size and parameters, also 35 uh, volts and 85 degrees C rated. And uh, here we are, just slightly higher capacitance, slightly lower ESR and slightly lower dissipation factor. So I suspect that something is wrong with the glue. Perhaps it degrades over time and becomes corrosive and brittle as we have seen. And I am inclined to replace this capacitor anyway, just in case, but I don't think it is faulty at all. I found this service manual online with all schematic diagrams and parts list and this is the right PCB and on the board we have the letter here is D so perhaps we have slightly a newer revision and the diode is marked uh, D903 and here it is and it is a very popular 1N4148 diode I have plenty of them So I fitted a new diode and a new capacitor and uh, restored this trace with a piece of wire on this side of the board. And there is one more capacitor of the same type here and it also measures fine. And I checked all other capacitors and they seem to be fine as well. And perhaps it would make sense to remove all capacitors just to clean out this glue and check the board. I see some corrosion here, for example, and I tested this trace and this via, and they seem to be fine. And there is a chance that there is some more corrosion somewhere under the glue. But let's not worry about this for now. Let's test this. It was sitting like this, playing music for more than an hour. No problem so far. Let's try some royalty-free music from YouTube library. It takes many turns to change the volume here, but there is a quick mute button if needed. So there you go. I will do some more cleaning and checking, and I don't think it is going to be very interesting. So let's call it a success and leave it at this. Thanks for watching. Bye.